We want to welcome you to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are worshiping today at Yale Avenue Presbyterian Church. They have very graciously loaned us their building after we had the fire at St. Andrew's. So welcome to worship this day. Welcome. Welcome. St. Andrew's. Welcome. Yeah. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. Can you hear the voice of God? We hear God calling us by name. Are you troubled or distressed? We come here to find a place to, to regain our focus. Come and find a guide who knows this land. We come to praise our shepherding God, whose pathways and doors lead to life.
Please join with me prayer of confession and silent prayer. Let us draw near to the one who is always watching over us. O oh God, you provide everything we need. You restore our souls. You lead us in the right direction. You are with us in the dismal places. Yet we are overwhelmed by choices. We wander after trivial pursuits. We think that we are alone. Forgive us, we pray. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus' name. Assurance of God's pardon this week. Believe the good news. The good shepherd is always nearer to us than we are to ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are embraced, loved, and forgiven. Glory to God. Today's reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The reading today from the Gospel is the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, beginning with the 11th verse. These are the words of Jesus. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now the hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them the hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. 
I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know my father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the reading of God's word this day. Thanks be to God. Many years ago, after I graduated from seminary, I was called to pastor a church in a very small town in central Texas. It was a ranching community, and, and most everybody there had something to do with ranching. Even the doctor in our church uh, had a few cattle. Uh, the district judge, the county judge, many, many people uh, raised cattle. And then there were the uh, full-time ranchers who had these large ranches out from town. It, it was a ranching environment. But some of those people not only had cattle, they also raised sheep. But you know, I came to find out about them that, that they didn't consider themselves shepherds, sheep herders. They were ranchers, cattle herders. And, and they had nothing good to say about sheep. Sheep were dumb animals. Uh, for example, I heard the story of of a, a sheep that gave birth in a mud puddle and just went off and left the newborn lamb there to die. Rancher came along and found it. Ranchers didn't think of themselves as shepherds, so they weren't going to take care of this newborn lamb. But they would take it into town and, and give it to some kid that Maybe the family didn't have much money and could raise it for food to sell or, or perhaps for a 4-H project. Those ranchers didn't think of themselves as shepherds and had nothing to good to say about being a sheep. So it was kind of hard to preach on this passage today. They, they didn't want to think of themselves as dumb sheep. Had it not been in the scriptures, they probably would have not wanted to talk about that at all. And yet in Jesus' day, in Jesus' day, that imagery of shepherds and sheep was, was just part of their culture. A, a thousand years before Jesus, the prophet Samuel was called by God to anoint a future king over Israel. And he came to the house of Jesse and was led to David. David wasn't even with his older brothers. He was out in the field tending the flocks. He was being a shepherd. And, and later on, when he became an employee of King Saul, and, and he offered to fight Goliath. He said, I can fight Goliath because as a shepherd, I have had to fight off lions and, and bears and, and I can do that. A shepherd looks after his sheep, even to the risk of his own life. So when Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, 
his crowds of people would have understood the shepherd, the shepherd is the one that cares for the flock, defends the flock. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, even to the extent of laying down my life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. That imagery of Jesus as the good shepherd has, has been with us ever since. It is one of the most familiar pictures of Jesus in the Bible. The window behind me shows Jesus, the good shepherd, taking care of the sheep. Jesus, Jesus is the one who will give himself for, for us, for, for you and for me. Jesus is the good shepherd. And what does that mean for us? Well, at, at the very least, it means that he knows us and we know him. He knows us. He calls us by name. Have you ever thought about how important it is to, to be known? Some of you know that Lynn is my middle name. My family and everybody calls me Lynn, but my first name is Robert. So if I get a telephone call that says, hello, Robert, I know that they do not know me. They do not know me. And it somehow hurts. I mean, we get a lot of robocalls and all that, but to have someone pretend to be my friend and they don't even know my name. Remember the story we read a few weeks ago when Mary Magdalene was in the garden on that first Easter Sunday, and she was so anxious that the body of Jesus had been stolen, and, and she, she didn't know what was going on, and she turned around and she saw someone, she thought it was the gardener, and then Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary, Jesus called her by name. Jesus knew his sheep, and they recognized him. I am the good shepherd. Now, Jesus contrasts the good shepherd with the hired hand, the, the one who works and, and tends the sheep but doesn't really care about them because they're not his sheep. And if there's a problem, he's not going to deal with it. It's not his problem. Over the years, I have been involved in interventions between churches and ministers where there was conflict. And many, many years ago, 40 or so years ago, I was involved with a church that, that wanted to, to fire their minister. And, and I asked them, what's the problem? And they just of course, went down a long list of things. They just dumped on the minister. And they said, the most recent thing was, we had a work day, a, a, a Saturday that we were going to try to get the church all dressed up for Easter. And, and, and the pastor said, well, Saturday is my day off. Don't expect me to come work on Saturday. I'm not going to be around the church. Now that was not a very diplomatic thing to say because after all, those members were also working on Saturday, their day off. But that was not the worst of it. The worst of it, they said, was the church is across the street from a city park. And while they were working in the front yard of the church, the pastor was across the street playing tennis. Now, that is not being a good shepherd, is it? Uh, that was just plain foolish, and, and I just had to really be careful what I said. I, I, I couldn't believe that. I could not believe that. We pastors, which is another word for shepherd, are not hired hands that work by job description or work by the hour or the day. And, and we can't just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm off the clock. 
It just does not work that way. And it should not work that way for any of us who are Christian. We know that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is for us all the time, is even willing to give his life for us, and we are called in turn to give ourselves to him. He says, I know my sheep, and, and they know me, they follow me, they, they hear my voice, and they go where I lead them. Now, sometimes, sometimes we have to be aware that not everyone who claims to be a shepherd is a good shepherd. Not everyone who claims to be Christian is functioning as a Christian. I, I, it, it just tears me up to hear people say, I am not a church member anymore uh, because I, I, I got run out of church. Or I am not a church member anymore because I couldn't take that that understanding of Jesus as, as, as a judge, as someone who, who, who really hates me, they have not heard the good news. But sometimes it is preached that way. Sometimes there are preachers who say, you should give me money so I can have my corporate jet and my $10 million house. That's not the good news. Diana Butler Bass has a new book out. It's called uh, Freeing Jesus. And, and she talks about various ways of thinking about Jesus. And, and the first one is Jesus as our friend. And she has been going around selling the book, doing interviews, and, and most people have been very positive. I have not read the book, but she says most people have been very positive, but she has also had one comment that said that he had grown up in an evangelical church and his first Jesus, his first understanding of Jesus, was a terrifying judge whose bloody death offered one escape from hell. There was no warmth, no childhood embrace. The scary Jesus does not naturally arc toward love. That Jesus wins toward violence, the sort we saw as a display at the Capitol on January 6th, when a man holding a Jesus saves sign stood next to a gallows with a noose. Sometimes we hear bad news preached, not good news. And yet, and yet throughout the Bible, we hear and know and preach Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Jesus Christ, the one who reaches out to save that one out of a hundred that is lost. God the Father who yearns for the return of his prodigal son. One of my favorite images of the parables is the father standing there on the front porch looking out, looking out, hoping that this will be the day his son will come back. And it says that while his son was yet afar off, the father saw him and ran out to welcome him back. That's the good news. That's the knowledge that, that Jesus is the good shepherd who reaches out and cares for us. Now, the Old Testament knew that as well because the Psalm 23 that is one of the most familiar Psalms in, in all of Jewish and Christian scriptures talks about the Lord 
is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, he leads me and, and cares for me and protects me. The Lord is my shepherd. And we are called to be his flock and his sheep and to be people who serve as Christ served. The prophet Ezekiel talks about the shepherds who were bad shepherds, kings who did not care for their people, who did not look after their people. And in chapter 24, uh, 34 of the prophet Ezekiel, O oh, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not brought back the lost. But with force and harshness, you have ruled them. And so they were scattered. And then God says, Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for the sheep and will seek them out. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel. God, the Lord God, is our shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd who, who wants to enfold us, to bring us in, to protect us, to sustain us. And in these <clears throat> very difficult days, in these very difficult days, we need to know again and again, Jesus, the good shepherd who cares for his sheep. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for Jesus caring for us, loving us, giving himself for us. O oh Lord God, we pray that by your Spirit we may Listen for his voice, for his words, for his teaching, for his guidance for our lives as we seek to follow the Good Shepherd day by day, year by year, throughout our lives. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
as we go from this service of worship, go in the knowledge that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, seeks us out, protects us, sustains us through, through all of the trials of life. God is with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us and will be with us this day and, and every day. Amen.